Gamers, I get it. You can't sleep. There's just too much blue light emanating from your gamer monitor and your gamer keyboard and your gamer mouse and your gamer headset, your second gamer monitor, your gamer computer, your gamer CPU, your gamer GPU, your gamer RAM, your gamer SSD, and your gamer chair keeping you up at night. In your words, those blue lights are poning your ass. How can we as gamers be expected to perform in tip-top peak performance if our 8 hours of gamer sleep are being robbed from us by those pesky blue light rays? It's just not fair. But gamers, I think I found the solution. A solution with a 100% success rate. And it is my duty as a gamer scientist straight from the phase laboratories to share my findings with you. The solution? Like 30 minutes of Diablo 4 before bed. <laughs> now, now obviously, I can't just say this without any evidence to support my hypothesis, so let's look at the scientific process. As you can see here, 30 minutes in, and I'm gone. I'm out like a light. I'm drooling, I'm slumping over, my eyes are barely awake, and I'm passing out in my gamer chair. Diablo 4 is nothing more than a $110 sleeping pill. But let's explore why this phenomenon happens. You know, because I am a gamer. See? Certified gamer, baby. Man, who would have thought the fucking vomit cake guy would make a good drink, huh? Every game has a gameplay loop that players will naturally fall into. It's just unfortunate that Diablo 4's gameplay loop is one of the most ungodly boring things on the planet. You spawn in, you activate a nightmare dungeon, you hop on your stupid ass horse and go all the way to the dungeon, go in, have to do some dumbass objectives that do nothing but pad out the time in a way that isn't meaningful or engaging, go fight the boss, or sometimes don't fight the boss and just have the dungeon end, get mid loot that you're likely not going to use, sell, salvage, extract the aspect, repeat. Now normally, I love gameplay loops like this. I love loot loops, I love finding loot and I love finding cool stuff, but in Diablo 4, it just doesn't feel rewarding because the journey to get to that loot is filled with frustration. Originally, I thought the reason the gameplay loop was so boring was due to level scaling, but instead opted to think for myself for once and realized that it wasn't level scaling personally, it was just that the game didn't have any respect for the player's time in mind. There were so many things in Diablo 4 that feel like they were implemented purely to arbitrarily extend the gameplay loop. Why is there a 10 second cooldown on getting on the horse? What does this fucking achieve? Is it so I don't spam the only move you get while you're on the horse? If so, just, just get rid of it. I don't want it anymore. If getting rid of this dumbass move means I don't have to wait 10 seconds to get back on my horse, Take it away, I don't care. Why is re-rolling of fixes such a tedious process? Why can I not see the potential of fixes I'm about to get before I commit with the materials and gold? Is it so that when I don't get what I want, which is 9 times out of 10, I'm gonna have to stop what I'm doing, go out into the world, find the materials and grind the gold just to come back and get a chance at getting in a fix that makes my weapon fucking usable? Why are there just random barricades all throughout the world? You have to get off the dumbass horse to break the barricade, but because you've gotten off the horse, you have to wait like 10 seconds to get back on the fucking horse because you had to get off it to break the barricade that the horse can't fucking go through. Is it meant to be like kind of world building where it's like, yeah bro, the bandits set up shop here, you're not allowed in. I don't give a shit, it's not world building, it's fucking annoying. Hey, why implement a horse that gets stuck on fucking everything? Why waste my time with a horse that barely functions? The Renown system sucks because it's basically a completionist checklist that you're forced to do. In any other game, a completionist checklist is completely optional and only for those who want to go the extra mile and do everything the game has to offer. But in Diablo 4, this completionist checklist has inherent bonuses to all your characters tied to it. And to get Renown to rank up, you have to do shit you kind of don't care about. So instead of being a fun little optional thing you can do once you've completed the game, it's got advantages tied to it. So you're forced to do it so you don't feel like you're left behind. It's just drawn out and flat out bad design. Oh, and you know, Good fucking luck if you wanted to swap your build out at any point in time, you know? It is a hassle to do that. If you wanted to change your skill tree, 
That's easy enough. You can reset all your skill points and then you have to painstakingly reassign all of them manually. Annoying, but okay. Fine, right? Let's do some quick math here, right? You get four Paragon points per level, starting from level 50. Four Paragon points per level, plus four Paragon points from each region in the Renown system, and that fucking sucks. You get like 240 Paragon points. If you got to level 100 and decided you wanted to change your build, you'd have to fucking refund all 240 Paragon nodes individually. There's no easy way to do this. This kind of leads into why the gameplay loop feels boring because swapping up the gameplay loop is such a pain in the ass, you're likely just gonna stick with what you've got and not give a shit because going through all this anytime you wanna change the way you play the game is painful. All of this kind of just feels like a surface level as to why Diablo 4 feels like a gateway to REM sleep state. There are 114 dungeons in Diablo 4, but there's only 23 bosses that get shared between these dungeons. Okay, I get it, you know, I'm not a game dev, I don't know what the fuck goes on behind the scenes, but like, it would have been way more engaging if every dungeon had a unique boss fight to it that made me want to actually explore the dungeon to experience a fight that I can't anywhere else. Maybe even to achieve this, we can cut back on the amount of dungeons that we have. Because in all honesty, who's gonna do all of them? The main couple of problems with dungeons is the, the layout design and the idea of tying aspects to them. The design of the dungeons is fucking awful. It's so boring and uninteresting. Aesthetically, they look really cool, but they're just not interesting to explore at all. And the problem is, when you get into a dungeon, it gives you an objective that 9 times out of 10 requires you to explore the entire floor just so you can get to the next part. And there is nothing to find. How many times have you gone into a nightmare dungeon and you've seen this objective and you just wanted to walk out and close the fucking game? The dungeon objectives in Diablo 4 are nothing more than padding for time to make sure you spend as much time as possible in these dungeons. And this would be fine if the layout of the dungeons was interesting at all, but it's just kind of not. Secondly, tying class specific aspects to dungeons inherently makes people not want to do like majority of the dungeons because they don't get any benefit from it why would i want to do fucking this dungeon if the aspect i get for completing it is for druid when i'm a sorcerer i don't get anything out of that i i guess it's kind of there to provoke you into creating a character for each class so you can go explore every dungeon and that would be a good idea if every dungeon was unique but they're not they all kind of feel the same, and it doesn't help that I've seen the same aesthetic three times in a row, and I've fought fucking Tomb Lord four times in a row. Not to mention, sometimes dungeons just end. They don't even have a boss fight. They're just over. You destroy like three or four of these eyes on an altar or like a pile of corpses, and then it's done. How fucking anticlimactic is that? Is what you do, Blizzard. You make the dungeons actually cool and interesting to go into. You make less of them so they're actually worth going into. And then you put a unique boss fight at the end of it that makes me want to actually go into it. And maybe make the loot not shit when I get it, alright? Loot in this game feels like you need a fucking dissertation in theoretical physics in order to understand any of what's going on. This is because the game has so many different types of damage buckets that it's trying to calculate all at once, but it's just so bloated. Why do we have a different stat for damage versus stunned, knocked down, slowed, dazed, trapped, immobilized, frozen, when we already have damage versus crowd controlled, which covers all seven of these? Why does Druid have a different stat for damage while werebear, damage while werewolf, and damage with werebear, and damage with werewolf, when we have damage while shapeshifted, which is the same as all four of these? You can make the argument that I'm cherry picking the buckets, but the point still stands, why do we have so many fucking buckets to begin with? 
With how many buckets there are in the game, it only serves to make loot worse and confuse and anger players further, because now they have to pray to some deity out there that out of the potential like 30 buckets that an item can roll with, they get one they might actually fucking use. But don't worry, you can go to the occultist and re-roll the bucket and you might get one that you actually like. There's no guarantee you'll get anything you might use. By the way, the amount of gold you have to pay increases like fucking tenfold each time. Fuck you! Weapon aspects are insanely frustrating because the majority of them rely on shit happening rather than just being a kind of bonus to the way you play. And even if they are a bonus to the way you play, sometimes it doesn't even feel fucking worth it because it feels like it only works half the time. And when item aspects go like, if, when, a chance to, lucky hit, it makes your weapon feel like it only works some of the time. After a while, you're probably gonna even forget what the fucking thing was meant to do! Now, unique items are meant to be supercharged versions of legendary items with their own unique aspects that make them something for players to hunt after. They're exceedingly rare, but they're meant to be build-defining items. Uniques, however, only start spawning on World Tier 3 and 4, after you've completed the main story. Now, this kind of makes sense, you know, the better loot is on the higher difficulty, but like, by the time you finish the story, you're like level 30, level 40 maybe, maybe even 50. I was, and by the time you get to that point, and then you get told, hey, now you can get the real good loot, I'm fucking burnt out on the idea of even getting loot in the first place. I vividly remember in Borderlands 2 getting my first legendary at like level 8 and it was a pitchfork sniper rifle in a fucking pile of snow in the marrow fields. After that, I was like holy shit I could get a legendary anywhere and they're really good weapons so I, I, I really want them. When I see a unique drop in Diablo 4, I don't fucking care. Not to mention that the unique aspects are just like shit. Like, they're just not interesting, and sometimes the legendary aspects are way better than the ones that are meant to be actually cool! Look at this, right? This legendary aspect gives me the ability to perform one of my skills twice. This skill will instantly freeze all enemies around me and then make them vulnerable, meaning they take more damage, right? Being able to do this twice is really, really good. And this is a legendary aspect. So I'm thinking, okay, if this is a legendary aspect, imagine what some of the unique aspects are going to be like. And then I get this unique and it's like, on lucky hit, you get like a 24% chance to freeze somebody. So either I get the ability to do this really good move twice that instantly freezes people and makes them take more damage, or pass a percentile check and then hope I pass the second percentile check to freeze somebody for two seconds. What the fuck? Uniques just don't feel like they differ all too much from a normal legendary. And it sucks because the uniques are meant to be good. There are still a ton of unique aspects that rely on shit happening. And they're just, they're just not interesting. They're not unique. And then it makes your brand new unique rare item feel like it only works some of the time. You know, forgive me for thinking unique items should have unique aspects that are actually interesting and cool. And if they don't change the way that your skills work in interesting and unique ways, at least make them be generous stat bonuses that won't be even fucking having them in the first place. Do you want up to a 20% chance to do a poison nova that can do 90 to 20,000 damage over a period of 5 seconds? Or just a flat 20% damage reduction and plus 4 to every skill? Up to a 15% chance to do 75 to 11,795 shadow damage to an enemy while also reducing the damage output by 20% for 5 seconds? Or just like a flat your critical strike damage is increased by 100%? Some uniques just sound better because their benefit is extremely simple, yet so wildly effective. Just because an item can do more, doesn't mean it's good if it only does it some of the time. It's worth noting that the items I've just been comparing are part of the game's uber uniques, which are said to have a drop rate of near impossibility. Uber uniques are meant to be chase items, 
items that players are going to want to hunt after due to how rare they are. However, if you have better odds getting struck by lightning, winning the lottery and finding your estranged dad all on the same day, players are going to realise that the chase for these items just isn't worth it. It just becomes a total slog to hunt for loot because of how bloated this system is. Because when an item drops, it's probably not going to be of any use to you because it's rolled like all the wrong buckets and re-rolling it at the occultist costs like fucking 5 million dollars and your entire inventory. Loot is just a headache because there are so many variables at play that make getting a good item way harder than it has any right to be. And just as a last minute addition, this game has no right to have both a microtransaction store and a battle pass. This game is $110 and they want you to pay more for it. Oh, but it's just optional, you don't have to buy it. The point still stands, there is no reason why your $110 game needs a shit battle pass in it. $20 for these skins, right? I find better looking shit out in the normal game than in here for 20 bucks. Huh? The game was $110 and yet you want me to pay an extra $20 for this shit? Oh, but other players can see you looking cool as well. I barely fucking see any other players in this game. The only time I see another player is when I get so lucky that I can do a world boss and then everyone else who's also lucky gets to do the world boss as well. One time I went to a world boss and there was no one there. Just fucking no one. Huh? Oh, but trust me, you're gonna know when you run into another player because your game's gonna lag like fucking crazy loading that player's entire stash. There could be like a hundred items in there and the game, the minute you run into another player, is like, hang on bro, let me load all that shit you can't see. What's the fucking point? There have been times I've been doing a Helltide event that has this type of currency in it that is limited to like the hour that it occurs and you lose some of it when you die, right? There have been times I've been doing this and my game has decided to just stop because two people decided to walk by me in the rare blue moon event that that fucking happens. My game lags, stops because it's loading all of their fucking items in their stash and I've died and I can't do anything about that. Do you know how frustrating it is to just die for no fucking reason because two dickheads decided to walk next to you and the game decides oh, oh, oh hold on there hold on there son we gotta load all their fucking items in there i don't fucking care i don't want to see all their items i want to do the fucking hell tide i can't do it now because i just died and lost like a hundred fucking cinders because these two jackasses walked next to me and you decided it's a good idea to load the whole fucking thing? I spend more time looking at the stupid item cards than playing the fucking game. Putting seasonal content and then saying we're gonna have expansion content. Maybe we should have just made the fucking game correctly the first time, huh? Maybe we should have just made the game good on release and then we wouldn't be scrambling to try and fix it with seasonal content and now, oh, expansion content. You guys, please come back. It's pretty clear with Diablo 4 that Blizzard equates time spent in-game to enjoying the game. But I think they forget that most of the time spent in-game is trying to overcome all the annoying and frustrating shit the game is throwing at you. Fucking hey, as long as the time spent in-game is high, that must mean we've done the right thing, huh? The only thing Blizzard has been showing us recently is how insanely out of touch they are, and this trend continues with Diablo 4. Understand that we can't let game companies keep getting away with genuinely bad business practices, because if we don't say something, nothing will change. And instead of video games being fun, cool, interesting experiences, they're just gonna further deteriorate into boring snore fests. So, in closing, Diablo 4 is the perfect game for Insomniacs, because all it does is disrespect your time and intelligence as a player and bore you to tears with a fake attempt at deep and complex gameplay. It's on my fucking green screen, man. It's not a green screen anymore, man. It's, look at that. It's a fucking grog screen.
<laughs> hey everyone, make sure to like and subscribe the video. Smack that motherfucking bell button, you know what I'm saying, you know? I don't want to go back to my retail job. <laughs> if you guys would sub, show your mom and dad or something like that. If you don't, or your friends, make them sub. I'll put these out faster, I promise. I, pr I promise, guys, I promise. <laughs> Alright, that was good. I think that was funny.